Hi everybody, I'm Miss Aline and I want to thank you guys for tuning in to Kids Corner on Armstrong Cable Channels 20 and 100. Today we're here at Jackson Milton Elementary School with the Kindergarten class and it's fun time with shell time and beach time. So stay tuned for our very fun two stories and extremely beautiful shell art project. I'm Miss Aline and I'm so happy to be with you guys today and share some fun things. We've got some interesting books to read today. Our first book is by Eric Carle and it's called A House for Hermit Crab. And our second book is called Rub a Dub Sub by Linda Ashman. And our theme for the day is beach time, shell time. Let's talk about what we do at the beach when it's warm outside. What do we do at the beach when it's warm outside? How about you in the back? Swim. Swim. How about you right here in the front? Surf. Surf, that's a fun one. If you're at an ocean beach, you can surf. How about you in the back over here? They just a cast a A sand castle? Was that what you were gonna say? I love making sand castles. Has anybody here ever made a sand castle? They're really fun, aren't they? And you can do lots of really fun things with sand castles. How about you? A jet ski. Wow, have you ever been on a jet ski? Yeah, my daddy. Mm -hmm. We in a long time ago, my uncle posted a video of him falling off a jet. Oh, I bet you that was first video with a rocking. Kind of funny, as long as nobody gets hurt, huh? Yeah. How about you? Boating. Boating. That's another fun thing you can do at the beach. Going fishing. Yes. Making stuff with, with your sand toys. Yeah, making different decorations. Has anybody ever been to the two different kinds of beaches that there are? There's lake beaches and there's ocean beaches. Has anybody ever been to the ocean beach? Me too. Did you notice that there's a bit of a difference between an ocean beach and a lake beach? There is shows. There are lots of seashells. When you go to the ocean beach and the sea, there are seashells. There might be some seashells at a lake, but not as many and not the same kind usually. So, did anybody ever collect seashells? I collect seashells. Around the house. Yeah, you have shells around the house? Yeah. Cool. Well, today, we are going to talk about ocean stuff and seashells and different animals that are in the ocean and that kind of stuff. Let me ask another question. Have you guys ever, after you went to the beach, gone and taken a bath and pretended that you were still at the beach swimming? I have. <laughs> it's fun to make believe sometimes. And that's what this story, Rub-A-Dub Sub, is all about. So, we're going to go ahead and get started with our story, Rub-A-Dub Sub, by Linda Ashman. Rub-A-Dub Sub. Sinking in my submarine, my sub, glub glub marine. 
Does anybody know what a submarine is? Let's have somebody tell us what a submarine is. Do you know what a submarine is? Something you go in the water with. It is? It is a thing that you go under the water with. What kind of thing is it though? How about you? It's a vehicle that goes underwater. That is a very good answer. It is a vehicle that goes under the water. And more specifically, it's an underwater type of boat. Isn't that cool? And it has a propeller on. It does have a propeller on this one, I think. Mm-hmm. So, a submarine is the kind of boat that you can actually go under the water in. Do most boats go under the water? No. No, they float on top of the water, right? So, a submarine is a vehicle that goes under the water and it's a type of boat that can go under instead of just float. Diving with a silky seal, darting by a dancing eel. Peering through a kelpie haze at rainbow fish, and manta rays. Ooh, rainbow fishes look pretty. Those are pretty. Waving to a whiskered shrimp, floating by a blowfish blimp. Mm -hmm. In the darkness, something pink. Sub is sprayed with murky ink. Does anybody know what sprays ink in the ocean? An octopus, that's exactly right. Octopus have ink. Isn't that strange and funny? And they have tentacles. They do have lots of tentacles. They have eight, very good. All right, sub is sprayed with murky ink. Skimming over sneaky dabs, hiding from the horseshoe crabs. Horseshoe mm crabs? -hmm. Mm-hmm. Zipping past a lobster claw, miss a marlin's pointy jaw. <laughs> Gliding through the wavy grass, glimpse a busy cleaner grass. Dropping deeper in the dark, meet a sleek and speedy Shark! So long, grass. Goodbye, grass. Flee the jaw, clip the claw. Tap the crabs, dodge the dabs. Clear the ink, pass the pink. Brush the blimp. Bump the shrimp, race the rays, hit the haze. Pardon eel, sorry seal. Rising quickly in my sub to the safety of my tub. <laughs> I thought he was in the ocean. It did seem like he was in the ocean, yeah. But guess what? The whole time he was in the tub imagining. That's why I asked you guys when we first started, has anybody ever had some kind of experience like that? You may not have thought of all the things he thought of, but the whole time he was pretending he was in a submarine looking at all those ocean things. Isn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> and that was our first story, Rub-A-Dub Sub by Linda Ashman. Do you guys like that story? Yeah. Good, I did too. It was really funny. So can somebody tell me about shells? Does anybody know where shells come from? What they do? What's their purpose? Crabs go in them sometimes. Crabs go in them. Other animals have shells as well and they live inside them, yes? And they go underwater. They go underwater sometimes in their shells. Very true. How about you? 
A turtle has a shell. Very good. How about you in the back? Crabs do have shells. There are lots and lots of animals that have shells and they live inside their shells. Just like we have skin, that's kind of their outside skin that protects them from other animals and other things in the environment. So we named a few things that have shells. And do you know that some of these animals, when they get too big for their shells, they change them. That's right, they change their shells. Do you know any animals that change their shells? Crabs. Crabs sometimes change their shells. Slugs. Slugs? Snails? Yeah. Snails, that's right. Snails do change their shells Slugs. sometimes. All righty, so we are going to go ahead and we're going to read about Mr. Hermit Crab. And this story is by Eric Carl, and it's called A House for Hermit Crab. And when we're done, we're going to do a really fun seashell art project. A House for Hermit Crab. Time to move, said Hermit Crab one day in January. I've grown too big for this little shell. He had felt safe and snug in his shell, but now it was too snug. Just kind of like we outgrow our clothes sometimes, right? Yeah. Ever had some clothes that you used to wear all the time and one day you put them on and they're like, uh-oh, it's too small and you can barely move in it. Ever tried to put on some of your baby clothes? <laughs> I don't think they'll fit very well anymore. You put them on your baby doll? That's a good reuse for your baby clothes. Hermit crab stepped out of the shell and onto the ocean floor. But it was frightening out in the open sea without a shell to hide in. What if a big fish comes along and attacks me, he thought. I must find a new house soon. Early in February, Hermit Crab found just the house he was looking for. It was a big shell and strong. He moved right in, wiggle and waggle about inside to see how it felt. It felt just right, but it looked so, well, plain thought Hermit Crab. In March, Hermit Crab met some sea anemones. Anemones. Those are sea creatures. They swayed gently back and forth in the water. How beautiful you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and live on my house? It's so plain, it needs you. I'll come whispered a small sea anemone. Gently, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his shell. In April, Hermit Crab passed a flock of starfish moving slowly along the seafloor. How handsome you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to decorate my house? I would, signaled a little sea star. Carefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and put it on his house. In May, Hermit Crab discovered some, some coral. They were hard and didn't move. How pretty you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to help make my house more beautiful? I would, creaked a crusty coral. Gingerly, which means carefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shell. So he's just decorating his shell all up to make it pretty. In June, Hermit Crab came to a group of snails crawling over a rock on the ocean floor. They grazed as they went picking up algae and bits of debris and leaving a neat path behind them. 
how tidy and hard working you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to come and help clean my house? I would, offered one of the snails. Happily, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it on his shelf. In July, Hermit Crab came upon several sea urchins. They had sharp, prickly needles. How fierce you look, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to protect my house? I would, answered a spiky sea urchin. Gratefully, Hermit Crab picked it up with his claw and placed it near his shell. In August, Hermit Crab and his friends wandered into a forest of seaweed. It was so dark there, thought Hermit Crab. How dim it is, murmured the sea anemone. How gloomy it is, whispered the starfish. How murky it is, complained the coral. I can't see, said the snail. It's like nighttime, cried the sea urchin. In September, Hermit Crab spotted a school of lantern fish darting through the dark water. How bright you are, said Hermit Crab. Would one of you be willing to light up our house? I would, replied one lantern fish, and it swam over near the shell. In October, Hermit Crab approached a pile of smooth pebbles. How sturdy you are, said Hermit Crab. Would you mind if I rearrange you? Not at all, answered the pebbles. Hermit Crab picked them up one by one with his claw and built a wall around his shell. Now my house is perfect, cheered Hermit Crab. But in November, Hermit Crab felt that his shell seemed a bit too small. Little by little over the year, Hermit Crab had grown. Soon, he would have to find another bigger home. <laughs> but he had come to love his friends, the sea anemone, the starfish, the coral, the sea urchin, the snail, the lanternfish, and even the smooth pebbles. They have been so good to me, thought the hermit crab. They are like a family. How can I ever leave them? In December, a smaller hermit crab passed by. I have outgrown my shell, she said. Would you know of any place for me? What do you think is going to happen? He is going to give his shell to her. That's right. It's a perfect situation, isn't it? Uh -huh. I have outgrown my house, too answered Hermit Crab. I must move on. You're welcome to live here, but you must promise to be good to my friends. I promise, said the little crab. The following January, Hermit Crab stepped out and the little crab moved in. Couldn't stay in that little shell forever, said Hermit Crab as he waved goodbye. The ocean floor looked wider than he had remembered, but Hermit Crab wasn't afraid. Soon he spied the perfect house, a big empty shell. It looked, well, a bit plain. Sponges, he thought, barnacles, clownfish, sand dollars, electric eels. Oh, there are so many possibilities. I can't wait to get started. So what does it sound like he's going to do now? Uh, he's going to re That's right. He's going to redecorate in his new shell and make a whole new family of friends for himself on his shell. 
And the back of this book, if you ever want to look it up in the library or tell your parents about it so they can help you find it, the back of this book talks about lots of the animals that live in the sea that we've talked about, lots of the different things that are living in the bottom of the ocean. All right? Did you guys like that story? Yeah! <laughs> Me too. Are you guys ready to do our fun seashell art project? Yeah! <laughs> yeah. We have these fun foam sheets that are in a rectangle shape. And we have lots of different colors. We have blue, we have yellow, we have red, we have pink, we have orange, and we have green. I'm gonna have you guys come up and pick one of these sheet colors. And then you're also gonna pick two shells. You're gonna pick kind of a bigger one and maybe a smaller one, okay? And then you guys will also pick a color of paper to go in back. And what you're gonna do with those three things, well, four things when we count the two shells, is we're also gonna pick some paint to go with our colors that we've picked, and this is what we're gonna make. We're gonna take our shells, and I will show you how to put an imprint of your shell on your sheet of foam, and then we will also have our shells, which are decorated now with color from our paint, to put on the sides of our very beautiful seashell art project, okay? Everybody has their two shells. I'm going to come around and let you guys select your paint colors. Now what I ask is that you don't touch them after I put your paint color on there until I give you your next directions, okay? Is that a deal? is you're gonna take your paintbrush, you're gonna dip it in your paint. And then you are going to paint this side of your shell. You're gonna take your painted side and you're gonna put it right on there. Now don't move it around, just put it right on there. And then press it in so that you get an imprint like that, see? done stamping and you feel like you are finished and this is your finished piece you're gonna take your shells and don't repaint them just leave them the way they are after you're done stamping 
and you're going to take your glue again and you're going to put glue around the edge of your shell just like this all the way around it and then pick a spot on the edge of your inside rectangle to plant your shell at. Everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed our fun time at Jackson Milton Elementary School with the kindergarten class and we talked about seashells, the ocean, and our very, very fun seashell art project. So don't forget to tune in next time to Armstrong Cable's Kids Corner on channels 20 and 100. I'm Miss Aline and until I see you next time, bye-bye.